Hello everyone and welcome to my second user review of today. This will go be a bit longer than the last one. Yay! Um, we are in Sao Paulo, Brazil at the... I'm going to try and pronounce this right. The Ginacio do Ibirapuera. Or UFC no Combate. I... I don't know how to pronounce Portuguese. Anyway, yeah, once again my cat's here. Hang on. You're on camera again for the second time today. This is the reason that I have, like, so many 14 subscribers, you know? It's because of you. They want to see you. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the uh, review itself for Beta vs. Nogera 2. A rematch six years in the making. So we'll start off with the first prelim fight. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, actually no, let's get the um, flight pass fight that I was able to see off first. Let's get it off, let's start off with that, I meant to say. That could be taken the wrong way. Uh, yeah, Pedro Munoz against Justin Scorkins, Munoz won by guillotine choke in round two. A lot of guillotine chokes in this fight card altogether, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it was a, it was a good fight. Um, Scorkins was doing a lot more movement than I normally see him use. Uh, he was using some really good kicks, but unfortunately he, I think he went for a takedown and messed it up. And then Munoz capitalized, guillotine choke, got the tap. We we uh, He was actually manned on top, and when Skarkin was tap tapping with one hand, the referee couldn't see it, so we had to use his other hand, which was free, so yeah, get him off me. So, it's kind of funny to see. So yeah, really good win for Munoz. Then we go to the actual first fight on the prelim card, yay. Uh, Luis Henrique or Renrique, I'm going to call him Henrique because that's easier to pronounce, against Christian Colombo, who's from Denmark, from Copenhagen. I've heard Denmark is a nice place. I don't know. I would like to visit it, maybe. Uh, and Henrique won by third round guillotine choke. I, like I said, yeah, lots, uh, lots and lots of guillotine chokes. Well, three, but still. Sorry for picking that up. Anyway. The fight was pretty much all Henrique, you know, he landed some really good strikes standing up, and he got some really good takedowns, and was opening Colombo with nasty elbows, like cut him open several times, there was blood everywhere, it went nasty, and eventually the third round came, and he was just like, uh, you know, I'm going to take him down and submit him, and that's what he did. Speaking of the second round, there was a moment where there was a ref, whose name I don't remember, Surname was Ribeiro. He kept messing things up through most of the card. This was one of them. You see, Henrico was on top of Colombo and was landing elbows on him, and the cuts got bad enough that, you know, the ref saw a lot of blood, so he was like, you know, I'm going to stop this fight. I'm going to call the doctor in. Normally, when a ref does this, after this has all been said and done, when the doctor is done checking on the fight out, the ref is supposed to return them to their previous position. In this case, after the doctor was done checking on Colombo, the ref should have returned them with Henry against off of Colombo. But no, they were standing up. That is not how you do things, ref. Okay, I know you're kind of new to it and you're Brazilian, but that is not how you do things. You done goofed. You done fucked up. And granted, I'm not a UFC official, but I know how to do I would know how to do my fucking job. Anyway. Henry came one really, really well, really good fashion with the guillotine joke. So let us move forwards. Next up is Johnny Eduardo against Manny Gamburian. <coughs> Pardon me, let me have a cup of, have a cup of, have a drink of a cup of. I'm not gonna have a whole thing at once, that's mental. I just made the thing, so it's still warm. Anyway, Eduardo won by Silicon Round TKO, and it was actually a pretty, pretty cool shot he landed. Uh, for most of the first round, Gamburian did kind of take it because he was landing some really good over and rights that did hurt Eduardo. But Eduardo was landing in some great leg kicks, and the lead left leg of Gambieri was just blacked up. It was really, really nasty. But yeah, he went in, he moved in for a shot, and Eduardo landed a good little jab, and then followed up with a bunch of punches, and the referee stopped the fight. And Gambieri announced his retirement after the fight was over. I think it's necessary that he does retire. I mean, he has been on the cusp of it for a while, in my opinion. He hasn't done as well as he could. In WEC, he was a lot better. And during his run, the UFC hasn't been too impressive, but he has done well enough. So, I hope he enjoys uh, spending time with his family, because that's what he said he was going to do. So, 
Anvil Gamburian on the extreme off chance that you're actually watching this. Uh, well, well done on your career. Wish you the best in the future. Our next fight is Marcos Rogerio de Lima against Gadzimarat Antigulov. What a weird name. Anyway, Antigulov did not waste any time. He pretty much went for a takedown right off the bat, sunk in the guillotine and choke, and won a bit one minute and seven seconds in. I would say, like, I remember every detail of the fight, but I don't, just why it only lasted that long, but bloody hell, I remember going, oh, that was quick. I, I was a bit louder than that, but still. He did a really, really good job. Like, he had uh, Delima where he wanted him with that choke. And that was the last of the three guillotines that you'll see. But he did a good job. And kind of an upset over Delima because he's Brazilian. Uh, I can't, I forgot to say that already. Antigolov is not. He's Russian, I think. <laughs> I hope. And, uh, yeah. It was kind of an upset win over Brazilian, but it worked for him. And then the final card of the prelims, Cesar Mutanche Tahera, who is very underrated, against Jack Hermanson. Yes, I did say that right. Uh... And Mutanch won by arm triangle in round two. It was very, very close fight all in all. Hermanson wasn't able to get any of his um, kicks off because he's very, very crazy with his kicks from what I saw. This was his debut, I think. He didn't he didn't win. <laughs> Anyone who saw the event would know that. But he did a good enough job. Uh, but eventually Caesar just like sort of took it to the ground. Managed to like an arm triangle and Try as he might, and Hermanson was really toughing it out. He was forced to stab, so he did. So, only first and only non guillotine choke submission finish. And really good win for Matach for that. And that's it for the prelim cards. We're going to move into the main cards in, in due time. So, now we move on to the main card, and I'm a bit quieter because my dad has just gone to bed. So, uh, the first fight of the main card was Sergio Ramirez against Sakoto. I don't remember a whole lot of the fight. Sorry about that slight pause there. Uh, yeah. I don't remember much about it, but Marais won. He did really good stand up, I think. Let's just move on. Next up was a pretty good fight as well. Yeah, first took on uh, Gamara Usman. No. Actually, no, I was going to say that this event wasn't worth whether or not this fight should have won it. It was very close second for the night, but it was really, really good. Uh, Usman, like, he's he's someone I enjoy watching fight, really, uh, even though this is the only second time I've seen him do it. But he did really, really well. Like, he proved that he's got really good stand-up, despite being mostly known as a wrestler. And he managed to uh, out-grapple others when he could. He landed really, really good strokes. He had him hurt a few times as well. It was a, it was a close fight, but he, you know, he got a good win for himself. So, yeah. Yeah, and his takedowns were pretty much on point, even though Alvaz was like, he did really, really good himself. But Usman just edged him out. He was just a bit better. It was a it was a fairly easy win for him. So, well done to him. Next up is Chris's Jotko against Talis Faitis. And Jotko won by also unanimous decision. It, it was a no contest uh, thing. Really, I mean, he was just a lot taller. He outstruck ladies a lot. He landed a lot of takedowns, which surprised me. <coughs> Considering his mostly on striking, he opened up some really good ground pound ladies. He did a really good job, and he definitely earned his win in my opinion. Yeah, once again, like for us, man against Alpha is fairly easy. Next up is Claudia Gadalia versus Courtney Casey. We're almost at the end. Trust me. Uh. It was, once again, fairly straightforward. You know, Dahlia? Claudia was just outlanding Casey pretty much everywhere. On the feet, she was doing a lot of good work. Uh, I really liked her boxing. I think she should use it more. There was a very, very controversial moment in round three, I think it was. I could be wrong. Where, as Casey was getting up from a takedown, uh, Claudia went for a kick. Because she thought that Casey was just going to get right back up, so if she throws that kick where it is, it's going to hit her in the body as she stands. 
that's perfectly fine. That's illegal. That is something you can do. Instead, because of the fact that Casey scooted in a weird direction, Claudia landed a kick that sort of looked like it glanced off of Casey's head. It's very hard to tell from the angle. Like, it could have caught a minuscule amount off the top of Casey's head, but mostly it just looked like it had a ponytail. It didn't look like it, do, it actually did anything at all. It's weird. Like, no matter how many replays they show, they really can get the right angle to show exactly what happened. I guess only Casey knows. I mean, Claudia did apologize a bit before afterwards, and Casey didn't really have an interview after the fight was over, so I don't really know what, what happened. But, you know, credit to Casey. I mean, she did manage to tough it out, even though she lost. And the thing is, a lot of people thought that Claudia should have had a point attack, and I'm sure she would have won the fight anyway. But she kind of should have had a point attack away, even though the damage didn't seem to really be all that much. And I was just going to hurt my brain the more that I think about it, so let's just uh, carry on. But yeah, well done for Claudia. Then we have the co-main event of the evening, Tom Salmeida. His first fight back after losing to Cody Garbrandt, his first and only loss so far, against Alberto Morales. Is it Alberto? Albert Morales. I thought it was Alberto because of the Morales thing. My apologies. Anyway. Sorry, my cast didn't super at all. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Thomas went by Sucker and TKO in a fight that should have been stopped sooner than it actually was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was definitely my pick for by the night, even though I didn't get it. Oh, well, I remember. Give me a moment. I am not intelligent. Uh, for Musashi versus Hall, uh, what should have gotten for the night was Volkov against Timothy Johnson, because that wasn't given for the night either. I guess with two events being on, like roughly about the same time, you don't really get a chance to give one for the night because technically they're all in one night. It's weird to think about. Anyway, Thomas won by second round take out. It was very, very close though, and he almost, like, he was rocked a lot in the first round. Because Morales kept landing those really, really good big looping hooks that were surprisingly accurate. A lot of them did land well on uh, Almeida. And, uh, yeah, Thomas eventually managed to get Morales against the cage. Oh, that was a yawn, it might look like something else. It was a yawn. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, he managed to get Morales in a skate, landed a lot of punches. Just landed really accurately with that big right, because he's got a really, really good right hand. And despite landing a whole crap load of punches, the referee didn't start the fight until Thomas landed a body shot and Morales fell down from that. And I believe this was the same ref from the Henrique fight. By the way, I forgot to mention, uh, like, you know, Henrique kind of noticed that he didn't put him in the position, so he took down, um, fuck, he took down Colombo, and the commentators even said, you know what, I'll just, I'll just take him back to the position for you, shall I? I'll just do my job, I'll just do your job for you. It was kind of hilarious. So yeah, really good win for Thomas. It should send him back on the path, as a man's mind. Maybe he'll challenge Dominic Cruz next, who knows? I mean, I think Cruz is supposed to be fine Garbrandt soon. And pretty much every Team Alpha male member that Cruz has fought, he's beaten. With the exception of Uriah Faber in their first fight, but that's back to WEC. And Cruz has beaten Uriah Faber twice since then, so he's definitely erased that loss from his record, without a doubt. And then we move to the main event of the evening. A rematch of six years in the making. Ryan Bader versus... Antonio Rogerio Nogueira. The first round was pretty, pretty close. Uh, Nogueira landed as really good boxing. Because the Nogueira brothers are known for having really good boxing and really good jiu-jitsu. He landed some really good shots. And he caught Bader behind the ear with a really good left hand. I thought that was it for a moment. But Bader managed to tough it out and managed to get a takedown very intelligently. And control the fight. Land some really, really good ground pen. Almost actually, almost finished the fight uh, near the end of the first round. But didn't. Then went to round two, Bader did the same thing, took him down, round him out, pounded him out, did really, really well. Third round came, Bader managed to get another takedown, 
managed to get out the mount and just kept landing bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb until the referee finally stopped the fight at roughly four minutes into the third round. So, really, really good performance from Vader. And he definitely needs to have more finish. I mean, he's actually closing on John Jones' gap as having the most wins in light heavyweight history. I think Jones would have more if he didn't keep doing stupid shit that got him into prison and into trouble. But, you know, I'm not John Jones. I saw Conway, like, if he returns, he's definitely going to take the belt back off Cormier, because he never actually lost the belt to Cormier. Like, Cormier got it, because John Jones did stupid shit and wound up uh, in prison. You know, he got in big trouble with the UFC, he was suspended. He still is, I think. So, yeah, really, really good performance from Beta. Uh, I think it's time for Lil Nog to retire, personally. I don't remember him saying he would after the fight was over. Like, I normally skip past the post-fight interviews as a rule. Unless I think they're important. But, you know what? I mean, Dan Henderson was like 46, uh, well, closing on 46, and his last fight was with Bisping before he decided, you know what, I'm going to call it quits now. <laughs> I mean, you got to remember, Henderson had like, you know, he held a belt in Pride and the UFC at the same time. No? He almost did at the UFC. He did hold one, hold one in Pride. Did he hold two in Pride? I forget. And he challenged on the for the Melway title and Bisping. He knocked Bisping out in their first fight back in 2009, got knocked out of the year for it. And he was the Strike Force heavyweight champion. I mean, Henderson has had some fucking accolades and a half in his career. He's done really, really well. And I think it's time for the Noguer Lil Nogueira to do the same thing. I don't know if Big Nogueira's retired. But yeah, Lil Nogueira, you know, he's not going with the accolades either. He's done really, really well for himself in the world of MMA. And the Nogueira brothers are always going to be a respected name in the sport without a doubt. I mean, you hear those, you hear the name Nogueira, you're going to think of those two. I mean, they're the only... Well, I was going to say they're the only twins I can think of, but then there's the Allenbergers, Jake and Joe. But yeah, yeah, when when you think of fighting brothers, those are easily the first two that come to mind. And funnily enough, for all the fighters with the same name of Silver, none of them are related. That is weird. Anyway, I veered off way too many tensions at the end. That's it for my UFC review. Really, really good event. I, I preferred it over... Uh, the fight night at Belfast because I only got to see four fights of that so it would have been nice to see more of that but I got to see pretty much all of this with the exception of one fight and normally I don't tell you about these but fuck it I'm gonna Darren Stewart whoever that is against Francis Marbrosso whoever that is Darren Stewart won by TKO a minute and a half into the first round there you go I didn't say that fight but I told you about it anyway oh, 18 minutes in okay I'm gonna stop uh, I'll see you all on Thursday or Friday for my next Ultimate Fire review. Then sometime after that will be actually uh, quickly. Ah, next week will be kind of another UFC review. What I'm hoping before that will be my backtracking of Skillet, which will be a two-part. Yes. Oh, this is. Good. So, uh, well, I will see you all uh, at a later date. Bye. This video's gone on.